Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our well-being presentation. Uh, my name's Samantha. I know that some of you out there will know me, um, and if you are new to the school or you don't know me so well, um, I'm Samantha Hodges. I'm the newly appointed well-being coordinator at Swiss International School. So please sit back and relax. I'm sure we'll have more people joining us. Um, have a cup of coffee or a cup of tea. Um, this is mostly information that we're going to be sharing with you today. Um, but you will have an opportunity to ask some questions at the end through a Microsoft form, um, which we will then take a look at, collate our answers and then, and then share back to the community. OK. To start off, I'm actually going to plunge you into the future and I want you to take a look at this very interesting infographic. Uh, you might not be able to see it so well. Don't worry, the presentation will be shared with you afterwards. Um, but what I found particularly interesting about this slide um, is all about Generation Alpha, which is anybody that's born from 2010 to 2024. And on the slide shows lots of predicted jobs for the future. So we see things like drone pilot, uh, lifestyle simplifier. Um, but what is also there, along with sleep technician and AI specialist, is a well-being manager and a sustainability officer. So I thought that was quite interesting. It just goes to show how important well-being is at the moment um, and that it doesn't look as though it's going anywhere soon. I wanted to share a couple of pictures for you this morning. Um, I know it's difficult. You guys don't get to come in um, into the corridors, see the teachers, see the learning environments as much as you used to. Um, so hopefully that will change. I mean, now we have our, our platforms that are pretty well established and sharing content with you on Seesaw and Teams. I hope you're able to, to see what is happening and have a feel for the learning that's taking place in the classrooms. And like I say, hopefully as the year progresses, we might be able to open up and get you back in the school, uh, have you in for our exhibitions, uh, for our summative assessment tasks like we used to. I'm sure most of you are familiar with this slide now, but just to reintroduce the primary leadership team again. So the leadership team has been extended this year, um, the appointed wellbeing coordinator being myself, and then uh, Jacob Delu, who is the appointed academic and innovation coordinator. So my role is primarily the pastoral team, uh, ensuring the well-being of students and the staff, and of course yourselves, the parents. Um, I do teach some moral education, so I'm able to get into the classes across the grades, which is fantastic, as I maintain my relationship with the students. I see them all in the, on the ramp in the mornings, which is also fantastic. Um, building that network, building that connection, getting them involved in assemblies, getting them excited about the day ahead. Uh, so also involved with the PFC, so closely aligned with, with you, the parents, um, in ensuring that your expectations are met um, and that there's a very good communication between us, school, and, and you yourselves, the parents. Involved in the assessment pass, which we'll talk about in a couple of slides, which was uh, very enriching for us last academic year. Enrichment and wellbeing programmes, looking at ASAs, um, other programmes that we're able to facilitate uh, in school hours at lunch times, and again, just making sure that all students are noticed and recognised um, and their talents are nurtured. I also take care of the logistics, which is uh, definitely probably the most challenging uh, part of this role. Uh, duties, um, play areas, pathways, and that's usually something that we work very collaboratively with in the school and the students uh, are very, very good at doing what they need to do to ensure that these play areas are fun for them, um, but they're also safe environments as well. So the state stakeholders, as we already established, is of course our students, um, our staff. We need to ensure the well-being of our staff as well, and of course you, the parents. So a quick look at what is pastoral care, and of course the health, happiness, and well-being of your child at SISD is fundamental, incredibly important. What's great about the IB curriculum is that a lot of uh, structures and, and codes of conduct can be integrated into lessons um, and the framework of the unit of inquiry, PSE lessons, moral education lessons. Um, we have our IB learner profile, so students are aware of the expectations of how they should be behaving um, on a day-to-day -day basis and they're celebrated for that in our student of the week, which is in our uh, weekly assembly. 
There are actions and consequences. Um, we are very reflective and restorative in our practices with behavior. Um, so consequences usually result in reflection time and they're co-constructed with the students themselves. So we do track behavior online. Teachers follow our leveled system. So level one would be the classroom teacher um, and then it would then move up to the grade leader. Uh, the pastoral care team would then come in at level three and then it goes beyond that to the head of primary and the senior leadership head of school would be level five. But again, we do try to positively frame uh, consequences and, and make sure that reflections are conducive um, and positive for everybody involved. Classes construct their essential agreements at the beginning of the year. So this is a, a code of conduct and a kind of behavior agreement that the students themselves create. So this is not something that the teacher does. They, they do it with the students and then it's it's posted onto the wall in the classroom. And it's something that can consistently be gone back to. We can look at the agreements that everybody co-constructed together. In our last inspection with KHDA, we had very, very positive feedback for our personal development. Very good across all sections of the school. And in the protection, care, guidance and support of students, outstanding in early years. And again, very, very good in the primary years and in secondary. Again, this presentation will be shared with you, so you'll have an opportunity to read through all the slides more, more carefully. So going back to the GL Pass survey, which we conducted last year with our grade five students, this is a well-being survey and it gives our students the opportunity to talk about their learning capability, how they feel about their learning environments, their teachers, their attitude towards attendance. And it gave us some really interesting data. We were able to see that 96% of our students uh, perceived their learning capability as high, which was really good. It was, it was excellent to be able to see this. Um, but also importantly, where perhaps percentages were lower, we were able to put an action plan in place that was personalized to specific students who felt that they didn't have the confidence in certain subject areas. Um, and, and we were re really able to follow that through. This year, we're going to be extending that to grades three to five, and we're going to be taking the surveys much earlier in the year. They'll be coming up in October, November time, um, which will give us opportunity to put the action plan in place much sooner um, and be able to follow that through and track it for the rest of the year. So that's something uh, we're very excited um, to be running this year. I'm going to take a quick break now and I'm going to introduce to you our school counsellor, Miss Chester George. Welcome. Hello, uh, good morning. It's uh, really strange to be talking into a camera where you can't see people. Uh, I like to see everyone's expressions. Very strange to be talking like that. Um, so my name is Chester George and I've recently joined SISD as school counselor for primary and child protection coordinator for the whole school. So my job in simpler terms, what I ch tell children is to make sure that everyone in the school is happy including parents and staff and everyone in school is feeling safe. So I work very closely with the inclusion team with Samantha that's wellbeing coordinator and the pastoral team to make sure that happens. Uh, so before I get into the details, what I do and what my role is, what I wanted to discuss was wellbeing, what it really means and We've been talking about wellness, well-being a lot more, especially after COVID. We, we have realized finally the importance of well-being now. And what does it really mean, especially for us? And what does it mean for our children? What do, what do they expect from us as adults, as parents, guardians, or as teachers who are working with the children? So what are they expecting from us with well-being? Do they need spa treatments like we do or do they need something else? Do they need mindful coloring sessions in the evening 
what does it really mean? Um, I've, I've written a few points that came to my mind, and I'm, I'm sure you could think of a lot more what your children need from you for their well-being. You know, you, you know that what time do they need a hug or what time do they need a bit of motivating statements from you? Um, there are a few things that I've put down is consistency and routine. That's one of the most important things that children need. Uh, the young children need, even young adults need to feel secure, to know that my mom and dad care for me, my teachers care for me, is routines. Uh, routines help them stay calm, uh, not get worried about what's coming next. It reduces your anxiety. So it's very, very important that children have routines in place. Sleep time, eating time, um, play time, study time, so they, it's not making them anxious. Self-esteem, what is self-esteem? We talk about my child doesn't have confidence or he doesn't have positive self-esteem, but what does it really mean? And how can you encourage that? By praise, by telling them what they're good at and praising their efforts. It's not always praising every little thing uh, that they're doing, but they're making that effort by coming to school every day, by eating healthy food. So praising them and praising their efforts and also involving them in decision making, especially when they start growing older, involving them in decision making um, enhances their self-esteem and builds their self-esteem and confidence. Support, just unconditional love and support. If you're failing, doesn't matter, you're always supported in school and at home. That that brings out the positive uh, wellness and idea of well-being. Balance, balance in life, in academics. So it's not only scoring 10 on 10 in spellings and 10 on 10 in literacy or math, but also creating a balance of a healthy lifestyle and learning to eat healthy, learning to uh, playing in the evenings or not sitting on the iPad for hours. So it has to be a balance. Uh, listening, listening and talking to children. We, we often hear that, you know, my child doesn't come and talk to me sometimes. So talking to children as well about your day and listening to children and listening in a very non-judgmental way, listening, accepting everything what the child wants to tell you, what children want to tell us sometimes and our, our normal reaction as adults is we react and we either get upset or angry or we laugh it out. But sometimes they they need non-judgmental listening and seeking support. If you think um, that there's something that you might need help with, asking for help, asking for help from your teachers, from school, from your well-being coordinator, from your counsellors, anybody you can seek help from you think uh, can help you with something like that. Uh, so, in, in my opinion and what I have seen in my experience, uh, I can say that well-being is not just one day of fun and rest of the time you're uh, not focusing on yourself. Well-being is collective of all of these things, routines, uh, self-esteem, creating a balance, uh, giving a non-judgmental space to hear children and giving that safe and secure place for them to feel good about themselves and be confident. So th this is something that sort of guides my role as well. Um, I think that guides uh, Samantha's role as well and my role together. So I would work with children where they, when you're seeking support, you seek support from me or you uh, take suggestions or some strategies from me and I help children you know, who are dealing with anxiety or um, there have been a lot of negative feelings around school or lack of motivation. Uh, other things that I would do is school programs, assemblies on a larger scale to create awareness about safety, about uh, road safety or about keeping yourself safe, uh, how to recognize anxiety, who to ask for help, how to ask for help, how to communicate and uh, request for help. Um, Next would be pastoral support that I work very closely with the wellbeing coordinator and 
support them in creating strategies and plans for the school and working on the behavior policy. And the last thing that benefits you uh, is parent support. So uh, I, I, I am new, I've not done it yet, but I do plan to run a lot of programs for parents and work with you as partners to help you and support you with whatever I can support you with. Uh, another part of my role is child protection. We take child protection and safeguarding very seriously at SISD. It is one of the most important things, well-being and safety. Uh, our policies are guided by KHDA and uh, the UAE law uh, called Wadima law. So uh, we, we make sure that our policies are in line with the current UAE law and we work in a team of all well, the child protection that's the child protection team so I'm the child protection coordinator the principal uh, the deputy heads in each department and the doctors so we work together to create policies and to ensure that children in this school are safe and we also create policies on our procedures if there are cases of abuse or if the cases regarding safeguarding are reported to us, what procedures we follow as a school. Uh, th there are our emails in the end, so if you have any questions or if you need any support, you feel free to contact me. And that's it from me. Thank you very much. And I will call Miss Samantha back. I suppose the luxury of presenting to an empty auditorium is that you get to take your mask off for a few minutes so <clears throat> we can enjoy that. OK, supporting students wellbeing at SISD beyond the classroom. Just want to introduce some of the practices that we do have in place for our students. Obviously, we're still in our hot weather zone, but we are ensuring that every class has wellness breaks so that they can have some movement throughout the day. We're going to be introducing wellness champions. So that means that every single class in primary will have a wellness champion representative who will listen to their classmates and then feed that information back to me of ways that we can improve systems in the school, uh, requests, wider school initiatives that they might like to see. Opportunities for enrichment and wellbeing clubs. So we touched uh, on that before. But Friends Resilience, the Junior Duke is something that's new this year at SISD. So you will have had the chance to sign up for the ASAs. That was happening yesterday and I think the deadline is at the end of today. So do ensure that speak to your child and see, you know, what are they interested in doing? Sign them up for as many clubs as you feel is appropriate and, and necessary. Um, so very excited to be starting, starting that programme very soon. We talked about the pastoral care um, and behaviour. And then engaging in wider school initiatives. So this is really big. We, we do have our awareness days, our awareness weeks, the week of understanding. We have the 30 days of fitness, which you guys get involved in as well, which is fantastic. Um, we have our dress up days and we have our house system, which is really important to all our students. So they enjoy wearing their T-shirts on a Thursday. They enjoy taking part in competitions and challenges in the assembly every Thursday afternoon. Um, and it really promotes a lot of student agency and student voice. A lot of the time um, they're coming to me with their own ideas. I want to do this in the assembly. Can I perform? Um, and that builds a lot of independence as well. They're responsible enough to go away and practice what they want to do, come back to me um, having rehearsed their piece and then understanding that, you know, they, it can go into the assembly if it's if it's been well thought out. So we're really enjoying being able to run our assemblies every week, which we do from the auditorium and it's live streamed into all of the classrooms across primary. So our house system looks like this. I know many of you are very familiar with it. Um, and this is our student of the week certificate, which goes out to one student in every class every Thursday. So looking at staff, Obviously, very, very important. We want our staff to be happy so that that filters down into the system. So it's fundamental. So we've introduced some initiatives this year, which I thought you might be interested in hearing about as well. So we have our teacher of the month. It's a teacher who is nominated by the other teachers. Last year, we were actually having 
a Teacher of the Week nominated by students, which was fantastic. So we will look to incorporate that as well. But the Teacher of the Month is nominated um, by their colleagues, which is a nice incentive. They get the opportunity to go and have a spa day um, or go to the cinema um, with some vouchers that they win for achieving that. We have the Be Good to Yourself Day. So a new initiative from the leadership team was giving all members of staff the opportunity to take one day off throughout the year that they would consider to be a well-being day. Um, you can imagine the, the teachers are very, very happy about that. Uh, praise and positive feedback. And there are times obviously where you give us very constructive criticism and we do appreciate that. But we also really appreciate it when you take the time uh, to write in and, and share a success story um, or appreciation of, of a situation that might have been handled well. And I think it's very important that that does go back to um, the people involved. So we look at sharing that feedback with our teachers. And wellbeing check. In. So since the beginning of the year, Chester and myself have been going around to all the new students in the school, first of all, and ensuring that they're OK. Uh, well-being check-ins with staff as well, making sure that they have settled into our community and taking into consideration professional uh, workloads as well. Obviously, we have lots of extra initiatives that happen outside the classroom, so we have to always have that uh, and take that into consideration. We have introduced professional learning communities this year. Um, so that's for us to become a more research engaged school. Uh, so we have broken up into teams and these small teams go away and do some form of professional development, whether that might be on well-being or teaching and learning. Um, and then we are sharing all our information on teams. So it's like a continuous ongoing uh, professional development system. So that started um, and is uh, proving to be very, very positive. And then just moving on to the parents, of course, so well-being for you, you're one of our stakeholders. Um, we would hope that our communication with you uh, meets your expectations and that we are professional and approachable. Obviously, we cannot have you in the classrooms like we used to, which is always was always great actually to see see everyone in the morning and greet everyone. And if there are any questions, they could be answered there and then. And um, we haven't been able to do that for some time, but we hope that you you feel our email communication is meeting your standards and the turnaround is in a timely manner. And then we have our P PFC communication as well. So we have all our parent reps who do a fantastic job in sharing information from the classroom teacher. And then we have opportunities to meet uh, throughout the year as well. As mentioned before, we have our online platform Seesaw and Teams, and we hope that you do browse through them regularly um, and look at your students' work. And we have our theme support sessions led by professional con consultancies. So they will also be starting once we get our uh, PFC uh, support uh, meetings up and running. They're coming up very, very soon. And our community events as well. Hopefully we're going to see the winter market back this year. Um, we've already started talking about what National Day is going to look like this year. Very, very big event. So we will be in touch about these things to come and hopefully look forward to having lots of community spirit back at the school. Again, this is a slide just to share with you the importance of well-being and how studies in the UK are showing that young people, parents and teachers um, are really demanding that well-being become more of a fundamental aspect of school life um, on a par with the expectation of academics. So, that leaves us now with one minute to go, an opportunity for you to ask some of your questions. So if you would like to follow the QR code, it will take you through to a Microsoft form. Um, feel free to ask any question you like. Uh, Chester and myself will take some time over the next few days to collate that information and come back with some answers. I'm sure there'll be some common questions. So we will look at uh, collating answers for everybody and we'll share that through the parent reps. Um, that can then be passed on to to all the parents. So I will leave this uh, on the screen for you. Just I'll come back to it in a minute. Again, the presentation will be shared with you at home, so you'll be able to have a look at it, do it that way if you want. 
um, if you're not able to access the QR this way. I've also put a little workshop there for you. I'm not giving you homework, but uh, if you are interested in learning more about positive education, there is a link there to, to an excellent workshop that you might find uh, informative and beneficial. And if you would like our email addresses, you can also make note of them there. And there is another link to the form there if the QR code is not working out for you. OK, so you should be able to find everything there. So I will go back to the QR code to give you a chance to access that. And I'll just take this opportunity to say thank you very much to, for giving us your time this morning. Uh, we're looking forward to a really positive year ahead um, and hopefully seeing, seeing your faces uh, a lot more around the campus. Thank you very much.